Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today is one of my back to basics videos and I'm going to be ironing a shirt. It might seem like the most simple activity for a man who likes to dress well. However, I know a lot of people are not that competent or a little uncomfortable about the ironing process. So today I'm just gonna show you how I iron a shirt. Now, my ironing journey started when I was about 16, when I was a young air cadet, ironing my uniform to go to the, you know, the activities I did with that youth group. Then I joined the military and they taught me how to iron. And then I've worked since that 10 years of my military life in professions where a shirt and tie was normally necessary. So I've always ironed my own shirts. And this is just the way that I do it. I want to stress, there's no right or wrong way. It's just the way that I have refined my ironing process to over many years of trying. Now, back to basics. So let's talk about the very elemental things you're going to need to effectively iron a shirt. An ironing board. All right. You can iron on the corner of a table or, you know, a worktop. But truthfully, if you can get yourself an ironing board, it's going to make life a lot easier in the long run. And get an, a nice solid one with a nice cushion top. Life's going to be easier for you. Now, when it comes to ironing, star of the show is the iron. It's named after it, after all. And uh, there's all different types of irons. You can spend a pile of money on a steam generator. Or for me, I just buy simple steam irons. I rarely pay over sort of 25 to 30 pounds. They tend to last four or five years and then I'll need another one. But this one is a simple steam iron. Just does the job, right? You put water in, you've got an adjustable temperature gauge, Simple. And the other thing which I have, which is not necessary, but I do like to have, I just like a little spritzer bottle full of water because sometimes a little bit of extra fluid on top of the iron, but water helps. Actually, I fill this one with these, uh, uh, this ironing water you can buy these days from the supermarket. It just imparts a nice fragrance on your, on your uh, laundry too. So I've got a simple white shirt here. And if you're interested, this is a shirt from Thresher and Glenny. It is cotton and I'm going to show you, I'm just going to iron it as if you weren't here and this is what I normally do, but I'm going to talk my way through it. So first of all, when I iron a shirt, I will iron the rear side of the collar. Now the reason for that is twofold. I just want to get the collar looking good. But secondly, it's a good habit to get into because if you're in a hotel, as you, you know, I often find myself actually, and I need to iron a garment, particularly a shirt, I iron the back of the collar first. Obviously you inspect the plate of the iron in the hotel, but sometimes there might be some grime or something on there. And if you iron the back of the collar, if there's anything on the plate of your steam iron, as you can see, um, it will likely come off on the back of that collar and it, it's just checking that everything is in order. And as you can see, I've got the steam function set on my iron here and I'm going to turn that off right now because I'm going to do the other side of the collar. This is the side that the world will see, all right, the important bit. I should also tell you that I have my iron set onto the cotton temperature, which is quite high because cotton is a robust fiber. It can actually take quite a lot of heat and that is a good thing. So when it comes to my collar here, I could apply starch to this, this part of the shirt. So spray starch, spray it onto the collar, twofold, right? Starch does two things. It keeps, it sort of adds additional solidity to the collar, so it'll stay sharper looking for longer. And also when you sweat and the grime from your skin comes off on that collar, the inside of the collar of your shirt, the starch will help it lift off a little easier when it's in the laundry, in the washing machine. But on this instance, no uh, steam set on my iron, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of my water, spritz it over that collar, because I just find a little bit of water is the boost that I need. And it, it adds some steam and it lifts and makes the, uh, the collar look all that much better. Just my opinion. And I'm just gonna run over it with my steam iron. There we go. Not making a big song and dance out of it, it's as simple as that. Now I'm going to put my steam setting on 
and I'm just going to whip my shirt and I first of all I'm going to do the left hand side of my shirt and as you can see I'm just draping it over the edge of my ironing board and now I am just going to iron this portion of the shirt which is visible to me just going to use that steam the steam's doing the work of course you can press down with the iron as well but the steam is lifting any creases from that section of the shirt that I've just ironed now I'm draping my shirt over the ironing board the bit that I was unable to iron when it was uh, just draped on there over the top. So again, going over that area, paying particular attention to any creases. This shirt was ironed, sorry, was laundered a little while ago, so it's been sat with these creases for a long time. So I'm taking a bit of effort. I'm gonna make a bit of effort with the placket where the buttons go, because obviously it's going to be very visible. Now that's half of the front of my shirt done. Now I just repeat that process on the other side of my shirt. So doing exactly the same thing. No song and dance, just let the steam do the job, get any creases out. Now redrape with the bit that I was unable to iron when it was on the top, and again get the iron on there, get the iron working, doing this job. This is a quite a light white cotton shirt, probably the most common sort of shirt people will wear. Uh, so it's a good one to show you as an example. The front of my shirt is now ironed, all right? A large portion of the work is done, and that's the bit that the majority of people will see when they first meet me. Now, at the back of the shirt, where there is the top half, the shoulder half, or the yoke as it's called, actually professionally. All I'm going to do, I'm going to pinch each edge of the shoulder where the yoke starts on the shirt. So as you can see that sort of double area across the shoulders. And now I'm just going to lay that flat on the ironing board. I'm going to get it nice and flat. And now I'm just going to iron that shoulder panel nice and free from any creases. There we go. All done. It's not rocket science, ironing a shirt. That's the majority of it done. Now I'm just going to whip the shirt over and I'm going to drape it over with the back panel, right? the main part, the bit around the back that nobody gets to see if you're wearing a, uh, a suit or something, but still needs to be done. So drape it over there, all looking good. Now if there were particularly nasty creases on here, what I would do, I would put a little spritz of water on that crease and that would allow me to generate a little bit extra steam which would help lift those creases away from the material. So that's all there is to it. Now we are well on the way to ironing this shirt. This is the easy part, the back panel. Just whip the iron over it, move the shirt along so that there's nothing being missed. This um, upper part, obviously the shoulder panel, has already been ironed in the last step that we made. So it's all looking good. That's it, the steam doing all the work, lifting those creases. Just do the last bit down the seam. We don't want to miss any parts. We don't want any creases. So when people meet us, they know that we've employed the iron in our activities. Now the shirt, for the best part, is done. I only need to do the sleeves. And what I'm going to do with the sleeves, I'm going to use the lower crease or the lower seam of the sleeve as my guide. So I'm going to make sure that the shirt lies flat. The sleeve is all nice and free from any creases so that when I iron it, it's going to look nice. And now I take my iron and I start at the bottom of the shirt sleeve where that seam is and work it upwards. Quite simply as that. Work it upwards and work it along the sleeve, setting a nice crease at the top. And then I'm just going to use the accurate, the bladed edge of my iron to get in around the cuff. The, the sleeve is showing me how it wants to be ironed. And actually for the cuff itself, I'm just going to whip the cuff over and iron it flat. There we go, from the inside. That's the sleeve done. And now I just repeat with the other sleeve, whip the shirt around, and I do exactly the same. So I just lay the sleeve flat using the bottom seam as my guide as to how the sleeve wants to lie on my board. Make sure it's all nice and steady. Iron, 
working from the seam upwards, getting all those creases out, nicely applied. And then using the sharp edge of my iron to get into these sections down here, the bottom. There might be some pleats in there that you want to be a bit more accurate with, with the ironing, but essentially that's it done. And now the actual cuff itself, iron it flat. There we have a fully ironed shirt. Now I have my coat hanger here. I tend to use wooden coat hangers simply because I, I prefer to use natural materials rather than plastic where possible. I put my shirt in, allow it to drape, hang on, and just, I do the top button up or one of the top buttons up so the shirt retains its look, its integrity. Now it can go into the wardrobe and it's ready to be worn the next time I need a beautiful crisply ironed white shirt with no creases and it will look absolutely splendid with anything I choose to wear because the white shirt is such a useful addition to anybody's wardrobe. So there we go, that's how I iron a white shirt. As you can see, it took just a few minutes. When you get going, you can crank these through and you know I tend to leave them in batches of five or 10 and then by the time I get uh, through those, I've had enough of the ironing, but that's how you do it, simple. Just an iron, an ironing board, and you're ready to go. And then you end up a sharply pressed individual. So there we go, that was one of my Back to Basics video. I'm just about to continue filming another one on how to iron a pair of trousers, which will be next up in the series. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to iron a shirt. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, click that subscribe button. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or become a patron. And everything about that is in the show notes below. So until the next time, take care, put that iron to work, and you will look as sharp as the best of us. Until then, I'll see you again very soon.